you probably are familiar with Kusamono and Shitakusa from our world of bonsai. Shitakusa is the accent plantings that are used, or companion plantings as someone prefers to call them, presented with a bonsai at a display to show the seasonal changes, to show the living place, living art of the bonsai. That can be small grasses, it can be flowering scrubs accompanied in a deciduous bonsai, depending on the time of year and what you want to express. Then there is Cosamono, more shrubs planted together to express uh, a piece of a field. It can be the bottom of a forest, uh, something uh, nearby a river, what you can imagine, what it presents, and this is, of course is very related to the seasonal changes. This uh, Cosamona planting is uh, displayed alone and can occasionally be used uh, with a bonsai if it fits in. That's the freedom of the artistic expression. Then there is the term Saike. Saike is a landscape presentation and that can be a tray with stones and trees where you look at a mountain, often a mountain uh, at a distance where you can see how the trees are growing, very related to uh, the old painting of Japan and China where you see a simple landscape uh, in a drawing. Then there is a modern thing and that is Saika. Not Saike, but Saika. Saika is a different uh, way of mixing it with bonsai and planting these together to make the same thing a presentation of a landscape. It was invented by Kaori Yamada, the daughter of Tomio Yamada at Saikoyo in, in Omiya in Japan. And uh, I'm sure they did it for business purpose to reach out to younger customers, especially women who were not very interested in bonsai. And that was an easy way to get young girls and women uh, adapted to the bonsai world. And of course, it's a kind of a business. The saika is often a little bit, for my taste, uh, decorative, probably de uh, offending someone a little bit too girlish with small stones and uh, small trees and a few shrubs to decorative, for my opinion. But why don't we take it into the world of uh, bonsai with the aesthetics of uh, the wabi-sabi? And uh, wabi-sabi is something you have to get explained in another episode. Probably uh, I will do that in uh, one of my uh, podcasts at a later time. But uh, wabi-sabi is this feeling of timelessness and imperfectness and uh, aids that we uh, appreciate in bonsai that is so important. So if you can put that into the Saika landscape presentation, then we will have achieved something uh, more uh, aesthetically pleasing, I think. So this is what we're going to do today. And I'm going to use this pot from Tor, or Villa, that I was, it's a present from him. Uh, and I will use this and it is a leaf shaped pot and I have really really thought about how to use a pot like this. It's a very special pot. It's a beautiful quality but also difficult to use uh, for a normal bonsai transplanting. Of course for Cosamona it can be used but I think exactly this piece is perfect to do a saika with uh, different plantings and I will going to use some different plantings that I've, I have prepared them a little so they are easier to divide and I have a Korean hornbeam uh, that was a present from a friend and it was uh, the meaning it should be grown into a shohan bonsai but I think it might fit in uh, even better in a saika presentation that it has to be cut a lot and it has to develop, develop over a lot of years but for the saika presentation you can use very simple material. You don't need a huge trunk, you need some uh, leaves and you need some flowering planting or something. You can think about it like Ikebana. You make a simple and elegant uh, presentation of the time of the year, the season, and it is not meant to be something that is put in a bonsai display necessarily. It is something that is presented by itself. I'm doing this when it is a little bit shaded and a little bit cooler in the weather because when we are transplanting at this time of the year, it is uh, important that the roots are not drying out. So everything is watered up and ready to do this transplanting. And we will not do a lot of root cutting, we'll be careful. And then we'll make this nice little display. And I will start by 
preparing the pot with a net, a mesh, so we avoid the soil to go through here. And the soil I'm using is a mixture of Akadama and pumice and lava, and I will blend that with the original soil from the plants. So we'll take a look at that, and I have prepared some mosses to cover up the soil surface afterwards. It was difficult to find mosses at this time of the year, everything is dried out but I have just uh, watered some up. And if you go in depth with the aesthetics and the Japanese approach to mosses and using them for ground cover, you are always covering the soil because it is looked upon as being dirty and we don't want the dirt in our, we want a clean surface and, uh, and a more natural appearance. I have seen some uh, shows lately from some exhibitions where it was small stones or akadama covering the soil surface, but if you take the tradition and the way of doing it, uh, the Japanese way or even the Chinese, I think, we are always covering with mosses. And if it should be optimal, you will use at least two or three different kinds of mosses to make a variation of the ground surface at the part. The mesh is put at the bottom of the pot covering the biggest hole that is the drainage hole so water can run out. Then I will fasten it with a piece of wire and normally I will never reuse a piece of wire. But for this purpose I am just reusing a piece of wire that has been unwired at a branch. And normally I cut off the wires at a branch but not this time because it was probably easier to remove it that way. But reusing them at the Another tree I will never do because they will lose the stability when they have been bent once. I put it down here and at the bottom I just do it like this and cut off what is too long. Then this is fastened securely and the net will not drop out. It sits tight. Then there are different holes where you can take wire through to fasten the plants. So I will do that. And here, and just bend it to the side so it's ready to use. I put a second piece of wire through to have enough to hold, and this is a slightly different color, doesn't matter. It just has to be able to hold the plants and the tree when it is put in the container. When we are adding a little soil to the bottom, I'm not caring about a special drainage layer because this will drain enough and there will be a lot of plants that will take off water, so adding a, an extra drainage layer is not, is not necessary. The Korean hornbeam I will use is placed in a bonsai pot and it was the purpose to grow it as a shohan bonsai but I will need a lot of time to thicken up this trunk and uh, simple trees like this it can be uh, a Japanese maple also uh, capable of being transplanted during the summer period the same with the Korean hornbeam if you just take a little care but let us deattach the Korean hornbeam and this will be the centerpiece of this saika. And uh, personally, I think there's a, there's a lot of seriousness in bonsai, and I love that. I love the aesthetics and the, the majesty of big trees. And this is a little bit more playful approach to, to bonsai, I think. And it has rooted very well. Have to take these pieces of wire, cut them, and then we can lift up the tree carefully. It has a nice root system. I will just take a little of the soil off so it can fit in the pot. I will leave the moss here that will protect the rest of the roots. And then let's see how we can place this in the pot so it looks good. And I will take care of pruning some of this afterwards. I think this will be a good position. 
there's a scar at the backside, and therefore I am turning the tree. So this is hidden, and just put a little wire up here to hold it in place for now, and then I will begin to place the different kinds of small plantings around this tree to support it. I have this grass type that has filled out the pot really well, very compact and needed a, a transplanting and to be divided. Is this the time of the year to do this? Yes, with this type of plant it is. It can be transplanted almost all year round. Of course you have to know that and I have to cut this to divide it and then it can be used in smaller portions. It's really strong rooted here and of course I'll use the rest to repot in its original pot so it can grow there again. I have to use a little force, it might seem brutal but it can easily cope with this. Then I have a small piece I can put back in the original pot. I will begin arranging these grasses first, putting a piece, I think, around here at the back. And I will not put everything just in one uh, place. I will try to divide it a little and spread it a little. And it is fine if it drops a little outside the pot, make it a little bit more lively. And I have a fern that I have prepared some weeks ago to be ready for this. Place this the back here, mingling with the grass. The ulterior with some flowers and see if we can fit that in somewhere. Remember when you are doing a saika or a kusamono planting that you are using some varieties of plants that will cope with the same kind of growing conditions and the same kind of soil. So you avoid uh, sedums in a soft planting like this one where it, is, where it needs to have an a, a even moisture condition and the same pH value that, so that the soil is not very alkalic or very sour. If, the different plants do not cope with that. So you need to find some plants that cope with the same conditions. And there are exceptions of uh, this. All uh, some plants are more tolerable on coping with that and others are not. I'll add some soil to fill out the spaces and the rains, the final things, secure the plants here with the wires digging in between the roots. And that will be about that, and then I'll just do a little bit of pruning to get this adapted. Just using my gin pliers, I could use a chopstick as well, but just gently pushing some soil in between the plantings, avoiding any air pockets that will dry out the roots. You can use a special designed shovel for this or an ordinary garden shovel like I do here. Not everything has to be fancy to work. Adding a little extra grass here. This presentation can be a summer presentation and it might well work well at other times of year too, especially in autumn when the 
tell us of the Korean hornbeam leaves change and the berries will come at the accents here. Not longer an accent, but part of this planting. Now there's enough room for the plants to grow. We want to be sure everything is filled up here. And then I just knock with my fingers carefully at the pot to be sure that the soil will settle. It's time for the mosses. I have prepared some of those and they will be used to cover up the soil so we have no open spaces with visible soil. We try to use different kinds of mosses to make it a little bit more interesting, covering the soil parts off. Let's make a natural appearance of a field. And there are th literally uh, hundreds or thousands of different kinds of mosses. So if you take a walk in the forest or at a parking lot uh, with cement tiles, you might be able, old cement tiles, you may be able to find some different types of mosses, pick them up and grow them uh, in a tray. They Mosses like this can tolerate drying out totally for weeks or months and they will wake up as soon as they get a little water. These mosses I had at a roof and they were completely dry half an hour ago. Then I watered them up and now they're fresh and green. The mosses not only help or not just added for aesthetical reason, but also to keep the humidity in this tray so the water doesn't evaporate that fast. Then I will give it a very good soak and place it in the shadow for the next days. The final thing I would like to do is just trimming a little of these two long branches here so it fits better with the pot. And the tree will need a little adjustment too. Uh, and like when you're pruning trees in general, think about the directional pruning. Leaving this leaf will make it go in this direction. So. It's not very different from pruning a normal bonsai. Here we just have a presentation of a lighter image, so I will not think about developing this as, as a traditional bonsai, but a much lighter presentation. This is it. A nice little presentation, a saika a mixture between a cosmono and a saike, a lands landscape uh, planting. The saika has a uh, beauty of its own, a simplicity that I really like. Uh, a few corrections I will do with this in the future. I will turn this top branch a little to the front so it will have a better direction towards the viewer. But for now, I will not touch it anymore. I have just replanted it. I will just let it rest, giving it a lot of water, put it in the shade. What I really like about a presentation like this is it is a little bit more playful than the seriousness we always have surrounded us with at, when we are doing bonsai. Bonsai is serious, uh, but it also has to be fun. I think this uh, saika planting is really funny and uh, when we are keeping it uh, natural, and that's the most important point, I think, without uh, artificial stones put inside, not being too de uh, decorative, but more uh, keeping this simplicity and beauty and timelessness in mind, then I think it's really nice uh, adding to the art form bonsai. I will put this uh, 
in my living room to enjoy it for the rest of the day and then it will come back out in the shade and in the humidity from the air that it will like. It could be, uh, it could be put in, I think, a uh, tokonoma display with a scroll adding a little seasonal touch for the future season uh, or it can be used as a decorative element in your living room. Having a little bit more fun and relaxation with bonsai. Thank you for watching this episode. Mm -hmm.